You have a paper that looks like this. As a part of your semester research project, you will submit current event entries that include citations, summaries, and inferences, conclusions, claims about the sources you are reading and reviewing that correlate with your topic. Your views on your chosen topic may change as you research. They should, really. Be open-minded and willing to, willing to see all points of view. So, you start with your semester research project, whatever your topic is. We talked about possible topics the other day. Hopefully you are trying to decide or you've made a decision what your semester research topic is. You start with that topic, and now you have to find information to support either your claim or the opposite claim. You're digging up information about that topic. As you find good material, you are going to be submitting those articles to me in the form of a current event. So everyone's current event articles are different. They correlate with their topic. So as you find some information, you're going to type it up in this format. This allows you to have a running Word document of information that includes the citations, summaries of the information, and information that you drew from it. So what this author's claim is, how it changed your claim, etc. So you just have a whole uh, file, a Word document file, full of information about your topic. So you're not doing anything extra for your current event. This is what you should be doing anyway. But to assure that you're doing it so that you just don't have a research paper due at the end of the semester, you have six current events due to assure that you're researching, reading what you're finding, and then you have to summarize it, come up with some ideas. So it all goes together. These current events are just a part of your research project. Okay, type your work in MLA format. We haven't had the MLA crash course yet, but we will. First and foremost, you will insert a header. On everything that you turn in, you will insert a header. Your MLA header contains your last name and the page number. So you simply do that by opening up your Word document, setting your font to Times New Roman, MLA, font size 12, MLA, paragraph spacing, double, MLA, insert page number. You're gonna choose the page number that puts the page number in on the right hand side of the page, and then you're gonna type your last name. So that everything that you turn in reads your last name and the page numbers. Everything you turn in. Good. Insert page number and it'll automatically come up. You pick the one that's over here and you type stacker. And then you exit the header. Out. On the first page only, first page only, and I type that because a lot of people put this in their header. They insert header, and they put their last name and the page number, and then they type their name, my name, the course, and the date. But it's on the first page only. So you exit out of your header, and you type your name, my name, the course, the date. Now the date in MLA is interesting. No longer do you get to, type, to write or type how you've always written the date, August 22nd, 2016. You must type 22nd August 2016, no punctuation. That's just how you type the date in MLA. So just get used to it. It is what it is. Center title. Your title for your current events are simply current event one, current event two, current event three. Your title for other things that you turn in will have titles that are specific to the purpose, but for your current events, they're just simply whatever number of current event you're turning in. Okay? So we don't limit what we're talking about, we just name it current event? Yes, ma'am. For your current events, you just title it current event. One, two, three, six. Uh, again, double space, times new Roman, font size 12. 
Part one, MLA citation. Go ahead and turn over to the back so that you can see the example. It makes so much more sense when you see the example. The only thing that, and I should have corrected this, but I wanted it to fit all on one page. The only thing that needs to change about this current event is the spacing of part two and part three. Should be double. So make yourself a little note. Double spaced. Oh, See, this is single space. It's part two and part three. So just make yourself a little note. Double spaced. Yes, ma'am. The whole assignment. Double spaced. Yes, ma'am. Everything is turned in. So, with your NLA handbook, you are going to cite the source just like the one you see here. Now, if you have your NLA handbook already and you have taken time to peruse it because counting sheep didn't work, you notice that every single source gets a different type of citation. However, the new edition, which is why you had to buy the newest book, really streamlines all the sources because 99.9% .9 of every source that you use is found on the internet. So instead of having a different type of citation for every single source, they've really created a form that almost any source fits into, which is the example that I have here for you where you have the author's last name, the title of the article, the source where the student found it, comma, and the date it was published. Now sometimes you will have more information than this. You'll have the month, the day that it was published. There, might, there may be an editor, and you have to include those things. And we'll go over that heavily when we have the MLA crash course. But every, citation is different and that's where your book is going to come in handy but again most of those online citations which is what you're going to be creating will look just like this one okay but take notice to how it's cited because that's how you'll have to cite everything as well um, part two summarize your source using five to ten complete original sentences so after reading the article you are going to summarize it. So this 